magazine called Mysterious Ways. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it before. So I got in several issues and they're really different I guess if you're looking for something paranormal to read. It's more like a paranormal journal than it is like a magazine but the only thing that I find strange is that some of them are slightly religious, not super religious, but slightly. And other ones are like out-of-body experiences, angel stories, um, you know, like kind of back from the dead type of stories. So if you're interested in finding something to read, as long as you're not particular on a religion base, because, I don't know, some of them have had like... Christianity, some of them have had Catholic stories, so if you're uncomfortable with that, obviously you wouldn't want to read it, but it's a decent little magazine. The only complaint I have is it's such a journal type that there's practically no pictures or visuals, and I'm the kind of person when I have something like this, I like to have visuals, but if you can deal with that, try out this little magazine called Mysterious Ways. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. And today I really just wanted to do a short video discussing how crucial and how important credibility is in the industry that we're in. Now credibility can be discussed with, you know, a lead investigator, it can be discussed as a production company, or it can even be discussed as a network per networks like you know, Travel Channel, Sci-Fi, um, TLC, or even Destination America. But most of the credibility falls onto either the lead investigator of the team or whoever is doing the mass amount of research, you know, or even host work behind the series because that person is who you're going to see the most of. I'm doing this video for another video that I'm going to post. And it's really just to get you guys kind of critically thinking about credibility in this industry. For example, if I would have been on that series that we've talked about, I told you I was signed to a couple series, and let's say that you guys saw me on this episode that I bragged about, and I'm not talking about Paranormal Challenge, and you saw me with a script in my hand, and if I was, you know, faking basically what I was talking about, or if I kind of stumbled over my words and said, uh, instead of an, a mel meter or an EMF meter, I called it a microwave meter or something like that, you guys would be like, wait a second, she may not know as much as she says she does, or if she's having a script on this paranormal series, how can she be promoting raw documentary work behind paranormal so much? Do you see where I'm getting at? Like your background with paranormal in this industry is so important. And the reason that it's crucial is because not only is paranormal basically a science, like you guys know I have thrown fits that I think paranormal should be declared a science because, I mean, we're getting there. We're getting there, so I won't get too heated about it. But since we are in a scientific industry with engineers and investigators, and these investigators are using really innovative technology, we need to have credibility under our belt. Part of my YouTube channel for you guys is not just, I don't really critique, you know, the characters that are involved, 
whoever has been hired as cast on all of these para shows. I'm really critiquing the paranormal, actually, production companies, as you guys know. But there's still credibility behind that. There is credibility behind every single person in this industry. And really, what it comes down to is there's a reason why certain paranormal shows or characters or castmates fail and they won't ever get another series. Or there's reasons that, you know, sometimes production companies will own one main hub. So like sci-fi has several other hubs underneath it, like Chiller. There's a couple other ones. There's a reason that sometimes those B-rated, uh, you know, networks where these casts for Paranormal Crew go to and they get on, there's a reason they don't ever get on to like a main network like Sci-Fi, Travel Channel, TLC. And that's because they just may not have the fan base, they may not have the stability, and they may not have the credibility for the paranormal community that we all yearn for. Like all of us know what it's like, you know, to be a paranormal investigator or be involved with haunted stuff. And that's what really gets difficult is not only am I trying to prove my credibility to you guys, but you guys already know a lot of the stuff that I talk about on here because you guys are in the same field that I'm in, which is paranormal. So you guys know that if I would have bullshit come out of my mouth, you would call me out on it with something with EMF or night vision or whatever else, right? Credibility in this industry is so, so big. And I guess I feel really privileged that I did get to be on Paranormal Challenge because, you know, it was a game show basically and you had to be pitted against another paranormal group and you had, we were on time constraints and you had to get the most, the best evidence you could the fastest way possible. And then you were on time limits to go over your evidence. You had to try to find the best pieces of evidence in a little amount of time. Then you have to present it to the judges and then whoever wins, you know, gets that title, which is Paranormal Challenge winner. And I feel so grateful that my team got to display that as our title. So luckily for me, I have already been developing my credibility since 2011. But there's other people that have struggled on the way and there's been hiccups, you know, in the past. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. All I'm saying is I really want you guys to think about what it takes to have credibility in this industry because, and I'm not talking about psychics. There's psychics in the industry. That's something completely different because that is not, you know, the science base, like what we all are interested in. We're trying to, I mean, some of us, I don't really care, but some of us are trying to prove to the skeptics that this stuff is real. This is how we can prove it's real by collecting data of EMF levels and you know fluctuations in temperature and capturing images on night vision, thermal cams, and SLS, right? We're trying to prove the existence of the afterlife through science base. But if you don't have the knowledge of the science, of the physics, of the background of actually investigating, the fearlessness to go into the dark, you're not going to have credibility. And there's probably a million other things you could even talk about before giving yourself credibility. That's really all I want to base this on. Just keep it in mind, every show you watch, how credible is this person or could they be? And you don't even have to do research on the actual cast member or the person. Just listen to what they're saying. Critically think about what they're talking about. If they're an inventor, what have they invented? Does it make sense to you as an investigator? If it seems like there's a red flag, do some research before you just jump on the bandwagon as being, you know, oh yeah, this is completely legitimate. It may not always be, especially unfortunately when you get Hollywood involved. All right guys, watch for my next video. Make sure you give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Leave me good comments below, follow me on social media, and I will catch you guys next time. Hell